I'm Scotty J. You are watching Rock Titan Music Television. Got a great guest with us today. You know, it's it's not all bands that they can say they've actually sold millions and millions of albums, let alone have iconic songs that are identified by an entire generation. But that is not the case today because I am with Mark Kendall, lead guitarist of Great White. Mark, how are you, sir? Doing well. Thank yeah. you. Rock me. Rock me. <laughs> yes. So, uh, we, like we were just talking about a little while ago, I guess the big thing in the most immediate future for you is you're headed out to NAM. like I know a lot of artists are at this point, yeah? Yeah. Uh, going to NAM tomorrow, just uh, visit all the, endorse the companies. Um, we got our own coffee now, so that's kind of fun. Right on. Uh, yeah. Um, so we're going to be in that booth for a couple of hours tomorrow, this rock and roll coffee industry thing or whatever. All right. Now what grade it's actually decent. I was just going to say, it's what grade of coffee decent. are we talking about here? Are we talking about something <laughs> dark, strong? Is it light breakfast, light uh, mild? What actually, we have three different ones. We got, okay. uh, the dark roast, which is the rock me roast. Right okay. on. <laughs> right on. And then we got, we got, uh. Big Time Brew, which is a medium roast, and then the lighter roast is, uh, God, what is it? Uh, Face the Day Light or something. I can't even remember what it's called. All right, very cool. Now, you know, for all great white fans out there and, you know, just coffee addicts, how can we get our hands on this stuff? Is this like only exclusive through the Great White website or what? Where do we get this? Yeah, uh, we have the link on there. You can just go on our website and go straight to the coffee people and uh, get it from there. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. I guess, you know, let's just get right into it. And you've probably been talking about this at nauseum, but, uh, you know, some pretty big news in Great White World, you know, uh, yeah. brand new front man, you know, just got announced yeah. this summer, Mitch Malloy. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, kind of happened, uh, not really by design. It was, uh, you know, we recorded the album uh, in 2017 with Michael Wagner in Nashville. Okay. And we wanted, in this one song, it was like the perfect moment for one of the uh, famous Michael Wagner gang shout deals. So... He called up about 20 different people that came down from different bands. I think it was like Pat Travers, uh, Hailstorm, you know, uh, just a lot of Mark Slaughter, I think, uh, guys from Winger, this, that, and the other. I mean, it was just a lot of, uh, you know, pretty big bands, and one person, <laughs> you know, from each band came down. And Mitch Malloy was one of the people. That's why. I, I don't know anything. I didn't know anything about Mitch Malloy. I don't think we said two words, um, but that's the first time I ever saw him. And then on the cruise, our former singer Terry had him up on stage at the end when we did uh, Once Bit and Twice Shy. We usually have, you know, if there's bands there, we've had Y&T, we've had several different bands up on stage to where it's like mayhem, 30 people on stage going, my, 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 I went to Vintage by Shire or whatever. <laughs> he was involved, he was involved with that. And what, and we were growing apart a little bit from, from, you know, Terry and stuff. Right, right. Just nothing radical. I, I told the story before. There's yeah, no, no drama, no issue. drama. Just, you know, yeah, it is no what it is. No drama. No drama. It was just, uh, this just kind of came along organically. One morning I was on my phone, just looking online, and it was, I ran across this Van Halen story. Yeah, about, yeah, I heard, about, yeah. Yeah, about Mitch Malloy being in Van Halen. I go, right. I know pretty much everything about Van Halen, and this ain't <laughs> one of the things I know. It was a fleeting uh, moment. It was a fleeting yeah. moment. Yeah. Yeah, they kept it real silent, and that, that's why I found out later. That's why I didn't hear about it. But uh, I was interested to look at that story, and then I go, "This is the guy that was on the cruise and did our gang shout thing." Kind of ironic, go, you know? Yeah, it was. And I I listened to his voice, and I'm going, "Whoa, man! It sounds like he's got a pretty good range." I just heard Panama with some version they did of it with him, right? And then come to find out he had this huge solo career. Like you said, I, I'm, I'm just out of the loop. It's not that he's not 
you know, semi-famous. I know he's been on Letterman and all this stuff. Right. Um, and a lot of people know about him. I just, not one of them, you know, I was kind sure. of on tour a lot during the, all those years and, and just didn't happen to hear about him, but it doesn't mean he's not great. Yeah. Well, three times uh, a charm, anyway. you know? So he's like the third, uh, you know, he's the third main lead singer for Great White, basically. So, you know, yeah. hopefully three times a yeah. charm here, right? Yeah. It, it, uh, anyway, so I listened to some of his solo stuff and I'm going, man, this guy's like a huge range. So I called Lardy, my keyboard player, mm -hmm. said, ask him if he knows it, ever heard of this guy. And he's like, he told me he's been looking into him for a while. And I'm, it was just weird because he never said anything to me. But, uh, and then I heard my agent was pitching him to Michael and all this stuff. But I, I was just left out of the loop for whatever reason. But so that's what I mean. It just, on my end, it happened quite by accident. Right that on. We, that we, that he was even considered. Right on. Um, but anyways, I was real interested after hearing his voice and everything. And I saw a picture with him and I on stage to where you could just see us two. And I'm going, that looks pretty cool, you know. <laughs> and uh, anyway, so uh, I go, why don't we send him some music first, see if he's interested. Send him some music, you know, old stuff like Rock Me and some of our old tunes and maybe a couple new ones and just see what his voice sounds like. Right. You know, see if he's into it. So he's an engineer, producer, and stuff like that. So it was no problem for him to overdub vocals. He sends it back, and it's just like killing it. Awesome. And he wasn't even sure if it was going to work. He told us later because, uh, you know, he was second in line for Journey. I guess the Filipino dude right, kind of right. beat him out because <laughs> he sounded so much like Perry. He just passed on Chicago, um, all, all this stuff. So. It's and, and when he saw David Lee Roth come out on that MTV award thing, he he bailed from the whole thing because he was he just said it was so he was so confused by it that he did, it just made him not want to be a part of you know fans going who in the hell are you and where's Dave and all this stuff so right. he just he got away from that situation so it wasn't like oh. You know, I got this great opportunity for Great White, and I hope I make it. He he was more concerned about does his voice fit. You know, well, you so know, what? Anyway. I'm glad you brought yeah. that up. I'm glad you brought that up, yeah. Mark, because that's actually a pretty good segue into you know some things that I'm really curious about. Uh, Mitch has got a great voice, no question about it, and he's certainly got the look. Yeah. You know, great front man. He couldn't get a better front man. You know, but uh, in, in terms yeah. of the iconic songs that you have, yeah. He does not sound like Russell, you know, like not, at least right. not to my ears, you know, and, and I've seen him, you know, right. I've seen his videos, I've seen him perform live with you guys down in Kentucky, I guess it was. And uh, was there any, I guess, reservations that you had in your mind? Clearly, we know at this point you didn't have reservations, but initially, like, what was the thought process in knowing that Mitch really didn't sound at all like Jack Russell, you know, and you've got these iconic songs? Did, were you looking for a right. guy? That you wanted I, I that sound it, like that, or I, I kind of know what you're saying, but um, yeah, we're, we weren't really ever looking for a clone right. because we want to continue to make new music. Obviously, we don't want, want him to sing the song so different that people can't tell what they are. Um, I think his his range is handles it, but everybody has a different tone to their voice, you know. Sure, um, but. Since he's been in the band, it's been about 99% positive with the fans. He's got uh, sick chops. He's got an amazing voice. And like I said, he's got an amazing yeah. look. I mean, he's a great front man, you know? Yeah. But uh, so yeah. all that yeah. being said. So all, that's all working out. That's awesome. That is awesome. So, But like you were talking about, part of the reason you went with a guy like Mitch is because you weren't necessarily focused on the legacy of Great White and all the, you know, iconic songs that you've had, sold millions of albums, but you're looking at the path moving forward, which I think is awesome and exciting, especially, you know, for your fan base and just for the music world, rock and roll today. Um, yeah. So you had Full Circle, you know, come out with Terry, I guess, what, right. maybe a couple of years ago at this point. Right. Um, so are we already in the process of writing new material with Mitch? Is this something yeah. that's going on? Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I uh, sent him a bunch of ideas, uh, 
you know, Michael's working on stuff. So we're, we don't have a date set, but we're definitely going to do something in 2019. Um, yeah, we want to get new music out there with his voice on it. Uh, but he sings the hits good. Uh, you know, people do come down to our shows to hear that. So he, he, he's pretty much, uh, you know, throwing down large every night. <laughs> right on. You know, on stage, he really uh, gets into it. Right. Now, how do you handle, I guess, the geographical elements of it? Because, you know, in talking to you, obviously, it sounds like you don't live all that close. So it's not like you guys are just hopping into the studio when you've got an idea and laying it down. So I'm guessing there's a lot of, you know, remote email, maybe conference calls like what we're doing right now in terms of sharing and collaborating on what you have in mind. Yeah, um, a little bit of that, but. When it gets down to crunch time, we have always kept it old school, which is us getting into a room and playing together. But these little initial ideas, I've been showing Mitch a little bit more like uh, on my phone and stuff like that. I mean, it's nothing like, it's not like we're laying down tracks o over the internet or anything. Right, right. Well, I've never even done that before. Uh, we've never recorded that way or... I've never emailed anybody my parts or anything, you know what I mean? Okay. So, yeah, we always get into a room when we're going to make a record uh, for a few weeks and, and jam. A lot of songs come from jamming. Just flat out, here in a drum groove, and I'll start jamming on something, and you go, hey, what was that? And let's go, you know. Yeah. We've had a lot of songs come from that. Very cool. Very cool. Now, obviously, Mitch is the guy, you know, and I think you obviously chose the right guy. You know better than anybody else. But uh, were, were you actively looking for a new singer when you picked no. him up? No. Okay, so it's just one no. of those things where it's just like, meh, you know, so it's no, not it like you had tryouts was, or anything. I mean. It was not by design. It wasn't like we were uh, had ads out for singers. I, it was just a freak thing that I happened to see that that Van Halen thing, and I heard his voice, and I'm going, wow, you know. That's cool. That sounds good, and whatever. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it was totally by accident. Right on. Now, I'm curious, you know, speaking with a musician such as yourself, you know, you were there at the heyday of music television, and you guys were heavily yeah. featured, you know, on MTV and VH1 and all that good stuff back then. You know, you had, you know, Once Bitten, Play Shy, and a number of iconic songs. And you sold millions of albums. And I just think it's interesting today how the whole concept of selling an album really is dead. You know, there's there's not a whole lot of artists today, maybe none, you know, that are going to be able to go out and yeah, say, yeah. we sold millions of albums. Because everything is almost essentially a single. You know, everything's like a digital download. Right. So, you know, do you ever reflect on that as a musician thinking, man, you know? It's a good thing that we kind of were out in front of this new technological boom that we were able to sell albums versus having to rely on, you know, selling singles digitally. Is that what? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, basically, the whole world's completely changed. I mean, I personally, as a fan myself, I miss going to record stores buying records, you know, it just, it was to me an awesome event. You know, a lot of the human element has, has been kind of stripped from our lives these days. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, I can remember with a friend of mine buying physical graffiti. It was an entire day. It was just like getting the record, setting it up, putting the speakers out in the porch, you know, listening to physical graffiti like all day long so those days are kind of gone it's just kind of like download a couple songs from this band you know that personal connection to bands isn't like it used to be like knowing every band member you know uh, so i grew up in that era and now we're in this era um we we pretty much you know make new music for our own energy yeah um you know just to not avoid becoming an oldies band uh, we we basically love to make music and love to be creative it, it's uh 
as far as the industry, you know, now that you can record albums in your bedroom and don't need money to promote it, really, you don't no longer needs these these huge advances. You know, it no longer takes like two weeks to get the kick drum sound. You know, right, right, on. Um, and all that with these huge budgets to make records. Um, it's kind of killed uh, the huge labels. You know, they a lot of them have have had to merge together in the same building and, and stuff like this. So it's it's just a little tough on the industry, but um, as far as we're concerned, the fans are still there for us. You know, um, we're not selling millions of records anymore. Nobody is. But yeah, no one is, and uh, uh, we just got to deal with it. But it's not stopping us from making music. We, we, you know, we've always done it for ourselves, anyways, and then just kind of hit our knees and prayed people will like it or whatever. Right. But we really enjoy, uh, you know, the art and the, and just coming up with new stuff and watch it grow into something and, you know, hopefully people like it and stuff like that. Sure. Now, are there any bands that you kind of came up through the ranks with in the 80s that, uh, you know, you're going to be playing with, like this spring, this summer, anything like that? Uh, we run into a lot of them, but it's mostly one-offs and stuff like that. Okay, all right. Um, so. And most of the bands, even bands like Judas Priest, aren't playing like arenas. They're playing like mid-sized venues and stuff. Right. So if we went and opened for them, we would be making way less than we are now. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. You know, they'd have to give us the the opening act treatment and all that. So right. we're better off playing, having people open for us and, and uh, do it that way. But we do run into a lot of the old bands, just, you know, um, Scorpions, and, like, we'll play, like, a show with them every once in a while, or it's it just a ton of bands, uh, you know. Right on, right on. That we've been into. So it's pretty badass. Uh, but the fans, that's what's so amazing, is the fans are still there. Uh, new generations of kids that... Um, you know, kind of discovered us maybe through their parents or, or whatever. And they're going, you know, I, I've told the story before, but it's like with, with my parents, their music was so distant from what I wanted to listen to, right. you know, we're talking like Benny Goodman and whatever, you know, the big band stuff, the singers, you know, right on. Uh, Nancy Wilson, a lot of great singers. It's not that they weren't great, but it was just, you know, I'm listening to the Stones and, and, and this stuff. Sure. So there w it, it was so far removed from rock, we couldn't relate. But we got our generation bringing their kids who were like in their 20s or whatever, going, at least this stuff rocks, you know what I mean? It's like they're going, holy shit, my, my parents aren't so corny. They're not, you know, this is this is pretty badass, man. My son, he brought about three guys from his work down to see us play. And they're like 30 years old. And one of them goes, and I hear the guy, he goes, your dad shreds, bro. <laughs> That's awesome, I'm man. Going, that is so cool. <laughs> you know. Do, so, uh, do you, now, have you passed this legacy of yours along, you know, is music in the DNA, you know, with your son here? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Definitely. Yeah, because right. my dad, uh, my ear comes from my dad. He could, I could hit piano notes and he would tell us what they were and all that. So he was a jazz trumpet player. Yeah, definitely. My son, um, although he's in business now, but he was in bands for years and uh, then he started getting more on the business side. Okay. Like, uh, running like punk websites, getting bands signed, gotcha. kind of got on that end. Then he went to school, got his master's and all this stuff. Now he runs one of those uh, CBD companies. Oh, yes. It's like, yeah, it's a huge industry really growing. I know. Like, he it's travels a all thing. over. It, it's crazy because it's really good for a lot of disease and and stuff uh, for pain and this and that. So Yes, I know it all that, too well, Mark. Like, I know it all too well. That's cool. Yeah. 
That's cool. Yeah. Yes. Are there any other music? Michael Wagner's on a business. He went to Michael Wagner's. He was on a business trip in Nashville. Okay. And it's on the internet. He was in there jamming and it's checking stuff out. Uh, Michael Wagner uh, gave him some of his time. So that's pretty neat. Nice, nice. Now, are there any other musicians active in the family then? Or was that kind My of. My grandson. My yeah. grandson. He's six years old. Uh, he has a drum set, beats on every day. He comes on stage with us with his guitar and jumps around. He doesn't really play quite yet. But you showing him any licks? Every, Come on. He, yeah, a little bit, a couple chords and stuff like that. But he's he has the patience for it, but he's just a little bit young. Right. <laughs> but this year we're going to start getting him. I'm going to start giving him lessons. And, and uh, But he knows every shape, every move from every guitar player. Just from watching videos, we played in Utah uh, a couple months back, and I, he disappeared, and I was scared to death. And I turned around, and he was running in circles like Angus Young on the ground. <laughs> I never seen him do that before. That's great, man. It, it, it's because he he saw it on TV, you know, he saw it on the video. So he loves the music, though. He he just loves he. He absolutely just loves it. Yeah, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I'm having a hard time thinking of Mark Hennel as a grandpa here. I'm just struggling with that a little bit. This, this is weird for me. But, you know, it's 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 cool, though, too. You know what? Because, you know, being a grandfather probably isn't too far down the path for me. I hope it is, but you never know. I mean, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. But uh, yeah, have, you, have you had a baby now, so. <laughs> have, have you shown your grandson? Like, it, has he seen yeah. any of your old videos be like, that's, that's grandpa. You know, that's, that's Pappy Grandpa. right there. Yeah, right? You know, be like, no, it's not you. You, you, know, you got the, the white goatee now and everything like that, you know? Yeah. Like, that's too funny. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's a trip. Oh, my God. He calls me, I, I, I'm kind of glad he calls me Papa because Grandpa is a little difficult to deal with. Right? Yeah, I, yeah automatically just, it's just so old sounding. Yeah, Papa's just cool. Papa, yeah, Papa. Yeah, you know, that's just cool. <laughs> that's, it. that's a cooler way to, to deal with it. Nice, nice. Well, parting thoughts, parting thoughts. And as far as fan interaction goes, are you pretty active, like, in the social media world, like Twitter, Facebook, uh, yeah. you know, Instagram, sure. all that stuff? Do you, do you ever yeah. have, like, fan interaction that way? Like, they can reach out to you and you'll yeah. respond? For sure. Um I have all the maximum of fans on my Facebook. I got a couple other Facebooks. Uh, one a fan does, another one a fan does. All right. But uh, yeah, I'm totally available for anyone uh, to get a hold of on my Twitter. Uh, you know, all right. Uh, in Instagram, a lot of interaction with fans on Instagram. On my Facebook, a lot of interaction. You know. All right. So, so you're yeah, an interactive I, I try guy. To keep up it on everything. You're an interactive guy. Yeah. Right on. Right on. All right. Well, everybody, yes, here we are with the lead guitarist the Great White, Mark Kendall. Mark, thank you so much for your time, man. I really appreciate it. It's been a blast talking to you, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. You got it. And you don't know just how a woman feels.